Hi, and welcome to another edition of St. Louis Presents on STL TV. I'm Rob Azir, and this is April Trupiano. We have another exciting show for you today. April, who do we have? We do, we do. We have got John Parker from Travelplex. He's going to give us really good travel information for whatever you're doing this summer. And we also have Teresa Harris, who's a teacher in the public school district, and she's going to give us back-to-school tips for parents. So this is a good one. And then we also have Mary Wheeler and Gary Stoff from the Board of Elections, because, you know, there's a lot of changes going on right now. So we've got some good stuff. And who do we have in the kitchen? And we've got Jeff Merriweather, who's going to make us a decadent burger for in honor of National Sandwich Month. And Jeff, I hope you can make a burger big enough for my fork right here because uh, I am very hungry. They're, they're real big. You got a special burger for us? Uh, yes, yes. What do you I, call it, the Jeff Special? Uh, I didn't give it a name, but it is the Pepper Jack Ranch Burger. Pepper Ooh. Jack Ranch. Spicy. Right, a little spicy. Well, you know what? As long as it's big enough for my fork, it's, it's, it's big. we're going to be good to go. I it's think, big. April, you got something in your teeth right there. <laughs> you talking about a half pound. All right, cool. Definitely. Well, yeah. <laughs> Join us for this exciting edition of St. Louis Presents because it starts right now. Welcome back to St. Louis Presents, and today we got a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah, I just noticed you put your glasses on today. I did. You know, I, I, I'm actually looking at getting contacts again, which I really don't like wearing, but holy smackers. It's, it's, it costs a, costs a grip, huh? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Why for something that? that nobody sees. Like, I don't mind for my glasses, because I love glasses. I think they're a great accessory, but... Nobody even sees your contacts. You know, women like to accessorize. I do. I love to accessorize. Coordinate. Con I don't wear contacts nor glasses, but yeah. I, I can imagine how bothersome contacts could be. Yeah, they really are. But now they make like those disposable contacts. Is that the kind you're trying to get? <laughs> I don't know yet. You don't know that. You don't know that there are disposable contacts. I know, but I don't know what I'm getting. You don't know what you're gonna get. No, yet? I haven't gone for the fitting. Are you gonna get the kind of contacts where you can change different color eyes? Like one day it'll be blue, <laughs> the next day it'll be gray, purple. Maybe. That'd just, be kind of cool. Just a trip like you just up. Just a rainbow of different colors. To coordinate with my outfits. <sighs> there, there you go. go. There, there you coordinate. go. <laughs> you got to coordinate. You know, had Eddie Murphy <laughs> and know, Boomerang I, or John Singleton. I know exactly. That what was that. Was that about. Boomerang? Yeah, I think was, that was Boomerang. It was, it was Boomerang. Yeah, coordinate. Yes. Yes. I see you're coordinating today, though. You look very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Got the pearls and the glasses and the. Is that like a cheetah or leopard kind of print? <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's definitely an animal print. I do like it myself as well, though. Thank you, thank you. Very I nice. like your new suit today too. This isn't new. This old thing, you know. You know I try to put something, <laughs> something, something together. You know how I try to do. All right, it. tell us what's going on around the city. Actually, actually, we really have to get to. Um, we want to talk about something that is not so. Um, Cheerful. Yeah. However, we really want to pay our respects to Alderman Carter. Um, yes, Gregory tragic, Carter. Tragic loss. Yes. Yes, who died uh, this week uh, mm -hmm. in, in a car accident. Uh, thoughts mm -hmm. and prayers go out to the yeah. Carter family. Of course, he yeah. did a lot in the uh, 27th Ward. Uh, yeah. A lot. You know, uh, really making uh, the, the streets safe. You know, he implemented some some programs to make sure that the streets are safe. He did a lot to take um, you know gang members off the streets. He also did a lot to rebuild that entire district, completely changed it around. Um, you know, a good family man, really passionate about what was going on in his district, and it really is just a tragic loss. And as Rob said, our prayers um, go out to his wife and children, his family, and the members of his ward, because um, they're going to have a hard time finding somebody with his passion. Yeah, he comes from a long yeah. line of uh, family members who were involved in, in yeah. politics, so yeah. he will be uh, deeply missed. Yes. Uh, again, mm -hmm. thoughts and prayers go out to the uh, Carter family. Yes. Uh, trying to transition as best we can. Uh, going, things taking place over at the uh, St. Louis Zoo. Mm -hmm. You know, the Asian elephant, uh, Ellie, is expecting yes. her third calf. A female. Yes. This is going to be the fourth offspring for Raja, the St. Louis Zoo, 
the St. Louis Zoo's lone bull elephant. Yes. Uh, the zoo reports that Ellie has entered the third trimester of her 22-month pregnancy and will deliver in spring 2013. So elephants, by the way, typically <laughs> weigh 250 to 300 pounds at birth. So uh, 22 months. 22 months. 250 to 300 pounds. I don't even want to talk about it. Whew, yeah, I can't think about it. Anyway. Can you imagine that if... I, no. You can, no. <laughs> she's like, I can't. I, I've never given birth, so I cannot she's like, imagine. Forget nine, but, you know, Ooh. nine months is bad nine enough, right? Nine months is bad enough, yes. I mean, you know, it's a glorious ending, but it's a lot. So, 250 yeah, no, that's pounds. That's crazy. So, um, also... Aren't you happy for Raja, though? I'm, yeah, I'm happy for Raja, you know, the lone bull. He's making his way. He's making his, uh, making his mark. What can I tell you? It's good. It's good. There'll be a new baby elephant. They're excited over there at the zoo. Um, we so we also have on. Uh, we also have what's going on at the Olympics. Yeah, the Fab Five and Phelps' is 19th medal. Oh yeah, you got to give deal. you got to give it up for uh, uh, Michael deal. Phelps. He now has mm -hmm. the record for most uh, Olympic medals obtained uh, mm -hmm. uh, as a Olympic champion. Yeah. Also, give it up for the ladies uh, of the yes. United States who won the overall. Uh, Yes. Gold in the gymnastics yes. competition. Yeah, congratulations! And gonna to all get them. the uh, Sports Illustrated cover. Oh, you know what? They're gonna Woo! be on the Sports Illustrated cover. They're gonna be on Wheaties uh, cereal boxes. <laughs> they're, uh, they, they, they're gonna have their own little promotions go out Barbie, all, all the over Barbie, the place. The Fab Five Barbie. You know, two things that I That'd that I noticed about the folks who win medals. This is this is what I learned about about that. The first thing is, do you know how much a gold medal? compared to a silver and a bronze medal is For worth? endorsements? No, no, I'm just saying just oh. the, the, the value of the medal. No, I have no idea. Typically, typically, like, uh, the gold medal is worth about $630. Wow. And then the silver medal is, is worth maybe about 300 Wow. And the bronze medal, guess how much that's worth, typically? I have no idea. Five bucks. What? Did you? <laughs> I had Holy no idea. Cow. It's worth five bucks. So you go... Four years of all this training oh and hard gosh. work. Well, and, a lifetime of you know, training. You it, know, it's great yeah. to win a medal, I, I, regardless, right. gold medal or you know, gold, silver, or bronze. But mm. to, to find out the bronze medal is only worth five yeah. bucks. And then so if you, you see it on eBay and it's more than five dollars, yeah, you too seriously. Much. And the other right. thing is, is that do you know that the athletes who win these medals have to pay a tax on them? Uh uh. Yes. Never heard that. They have to pay taxes. Wow. on their medals. Wow. So typically, I mean, and it's, it's really, it's really high. It's actually, the taxes are almost worth, are more than what the medal's actually worth. Okay, you're kind of ruining the thunder of the medal. <laughs> I'm just really excited these people want a medal and they're gonna get endorsements. But, exactly, so you know what? So, you you know, want a gold medal, no matter yeah. what the taxes are, don't even worry about it because the endorsements are going to far outweigh what you have exactly. to pay. Exactly. Millions found that, and millions. I just found that to be interesting. It is interesting. It's it just, is. just something, you, you it know, is. you yeah. learn something new every day. Yeah, I know. You learn something You're new really every smart. day. You're really smart. I try to think I yes, am. You, <laughs> I try to think I am. Even though you don't have glasses, you're still smart. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now listen, August is National Sandwich Month, which which I know you brought up. Did you know that the sandwich sandwich was first introduced in 1827 in the first cookbook? You know because in the first cookbook. Yes. Yes. Well, it, I thought it was the uh, the Earl of Sandwich uh, who actually. <laughs> no, seriously. No. Wasn't it? No, I got it right here. No, no seriously, I'll tell a, you. No, there's some. It was woman. John Montagu, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, in 1762. But That's it was what my first introduced me. in America, okay, oh, as okay. like a common staple in the household, something that the reason it was a big deal is because, you know, before they used to just chunk off the bread, which actually we still do in Italy. I don't know. Some countries still do. You just kind of rip it off and enjoy it. But to put it into slices, you know, and then slap some stuff in the middle and, you know, you be able to put it? it in a baggie. I don't you think they had it? baggies then. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you could take it to work, send it with your kids. It's a big deal with school coming up, right? Yeah, but I mean, I love sandwiches. I mean, if not yeah. for a sandwich, yeah. Lord knows how many meals I would have missed. Yes. Uh, so sandwiches are very important to me. Yeah. Um, I like the wraps. What's, what's your favorite kind of sandwich? I love the wraps. Um, I, you know, I just like the idea that it holds more on. You can put more good, yummy stuff. And it's actually, you can put cheese in there. You know, it's National Goat Cheese Month, too. You can put all that how stuff many, in there. How many events are there this month? I don't like, know. Like, seriously, there's like every week or every month, it's always something. It's just like this week is like you said, uh, National Sandwich Month, uh, National Immunization Awareness oh, Month, that too, National yeah. Goat Cheese Month. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. Love Rob Every Day Month. You know what? Um, you know, there's actually a process. You can apply to have a. You can apply for this National Something Awareness Month or something month. You could apply for so that. So literally, national, I can get national, national Love Rob Month. Yes, you could. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you could. We can apply for that. Yes. 
I'm going to apply for that. I'm going to make it May, the month of May, since that's the month of my birthday. All right. So get ready, folks. 2013, May, National Love Rob Month. All right, we're going to take a, a, a break here uh, <laughs> on St. Louis Presents. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to be joined by our first guest, uh, John Parker, the travel agent of Travelplex, to let us know and help you figure out a better way to travel, make your plan, save some money, all that good stuff. So stay yeah. with us on St. Louis Presents. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Hey St. Louis, I'm Cara Kay. Keep it right here on STL TV. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. You'll discover healthy and loving animals just waiting to become a part of your family. Find out more at theshelterpetproject.org. innocent things from triggering an asthma attack. Please make the monsters go away. Learn how to stop their asthma attacks at noattacks.org. Welcome back to St. Louis Presents. You know, we wanted to kick off the show because we know it's the summer and a lot of people travel during the summer. And while we're at the tail end of it, you still have some time to go out there and pick that perfect getaway before the kids go back to school or before maybe you go back to work and start the fall season because football season starts and nobody wants to travel then. <laughs> so joining us is John Parker, the uh, vice president of Travelplex. And uh, John, thanks for coming on the show first off. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Now, the biggest question everybody probably has when it comes to travel is where should I look for the best deal? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, a lot, lots of people want to, they, they like to go online and they think that they can find the best deal online because they can do it themselves. Um, if you were going to, uh, if you had a law, lawsuit against you, would you go out and defend yourself? Uh, no. Well, exactly. Not. You'd probably hire a lawyer, wouldn't <laughs> yes, you? Yes, exactly. <laughs> the best thing that you can possibly do is go find a travel agency or a professional travel agent. Most travel agents have traveled the world. If you walk into a travel agency, there are a vast number of people in that office who've been all over the world, and somebody can, can sit down and show you exactly uh, the type of trip that, you, that you'd like to take. They, they're going to counsel you on it, counsel you on, on the good, the, on the bad, the pros and cons of, of every place that you'd like to travel to. So, for instance, in Mexico, there are certain places that you can go in Mexico that you can't go to the beach because if you swim, the undertow will pull you under. And lots of people look at that picture of this this great resort, and they don't understand that I can't even swim in that in that beach. They don't they don't have any idea about that. Mm -hmm. So the best thing that you can do is invest your time. It doesn't cost you any more money, and that's the big myth about going right. to a travel agency is that people think that a travel agent is going to charge them more money. That is very untrue. Uh, it costs you no more to invest your time into a, in a travel agent than it is to go online. In fact, it, it saves you 
significantly, uh, a, a significant large amount of time in just investing your time in the travel agent. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah, you know, as a, especially as a business owner, that's something I just don't want to deal with. Yes. You know, we've talked about that before, is that I just, it just takes up way too much of my time and even my administrative staff's time. I mean, why not if I can just call somebody up and say, here's where I need to go and right. make it work? Well, most people think that, you know, I can sit, I can go online, I can find my flights, I can find my hotel, I can find my rental car. And if you think about how much time that takes, mm -hmm. Uh, it takes anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, if you're lucky, to get right. everything that you want. Uh, where you can pick up the phone, uh, call your local travel agent, and they can, it, it's a right. five minute phone call. You tell them where you want to go, when you want to be there, and you hang up the phone, and they take care of the whole thing for you. I love so, that. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Love it, love it. April works with us at Travel <laughs> Right. So. I well, I mean, again, but there's, there's going to be those folks who are, are adamant who still have those beliefs that, you know what, I'd rather shop on my own, rather go online. And for those people, when they, when they do choose to go online, do you, do you recommend anything that they do if, the, if they go that route? I don't even recommend that you go online. <laughs> Here's what happens. He's like, forget that. Well, people, you know, you'll go to Travelocity or Orbitz or places like that online, and people think, well, they'll see that $2.99 flight. And that is what they call, a, in, in the industry, they call it a ghost fare. That means at one point in time, there was one seat on that plane that cost $2.99. And that is the teaser that gets you to go. But if you try and book that $2.99 flight, oh, that never happens. it will automatically kick you to the five or $600 flight because the $2.99 the flight is no longer available. The other thing is, people think you can go online and book for free. Uh, just recently, and I just sent you this email, Travelocity was just recently fined $180,000 mm -hmm. for hiding their fees. Uh, Orbitz does it, Yahoo does it, everybody does it on, uh, with those online booking agencies. They hide their fees. That's why most of those companies are making 15 to $20 million a year because they hide their fees when you're, when you're booking travel with them. So. Well, you know, and one of the biggest things that I found is that not only are there hidden fees, not only do those fares rarely show up, but you know when you actually go to book right. but also the fact that if you have a problem you're 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 on your own yes you are, you are you're your just own. sol you're on your own and yeah. you got to figure out how to fix it and when you're getting ready to travel you know i had it happen once where my travel wasn't confirmed properly for some reason night before i'm supposed to leave there, there was no way to call at no. 11 o'clock at night you know so it was um so call the yeah. 800 number you'll get okay yeah. push one to get to this yes. push two to yeah. get to that yeah. and you could sit on uh, on hold for up to two hours yeah, sometimes, definitely. waiting for somebody to come online who doesn't know they you, don't even have that has answer. no interest in what's going on with you. It could be two o'clock in the morning, they don't care. Uh, and with, when you have a professional travel agent, they are watching your fares, your hotel reservations, your rental cars. They take care of you from oh, start to finish. From start to finish, they're gonna tell you what to do, how to pack, when to get to the airport, gotcha. the whole thing. Okay. So. Now, let me ask you this question. Um, online, as opposed to having a travel agent, is there a best day to buy a ticket or a fare or anything like that. Does that exist? But Is not, it? not necessarily. Um, there are certain times of the year uh, where if you're going to the Caribbean or going to Mexico, you know, things get a little crazy during hurricane season. So right. there are times of the year where you, want to, where you want to travel to certain destinations, but there's certain times of the year where you, you, you have to be careful with so, things like so that. So right now, what would be the, you know, Right now, just give me a place, the best place to go right now for the best fare, what area in the city or in the, out of the country? Well, it's tough to what say. It's rates? tough to say because airfare has, has, anybody who's tried to travel here recently uh, within the last year knows, yes, you know very well, that airfare has, has increased astronomically. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and, you know, the reason being you've got, uh, you've got fuel price wars, you've got probably a million and a half less seats that are available on flights this year as opposed to last year. That flight that was taking off a year ago that had that the plane set 300 people and it had 100 people on the plane, that flight doesn't exist anymore. The planes aren't taking off unless they're full, they're canceling routes, they're doing things like that. So that's driving the price of airfare uh, through the roof right now. The $400, trip, $400 trip to Vegas is about $1,000 now. So it's a little bit different than it used to be. So it's hard to say, you just, you tell me where you wanna go and we look and find the best available fare that we can possibly get you there and, and make it as convenient for you as possible. Now, are, so given all of that, are cruises still as hot as they used to be? Because I also know that we've had some 
you know, some, some tragedies. Mishaps. Yeah, some, we've had some, some mishaps. We we had a little misdirection with some yes, of the boats yes. recently. Cruises will always be hot because they're all, most of them are all inclusive, mm -hmm. and people like to go where I can drop one one price and get all the amenities that I can possibly get for one single price. Uh, anytime there's a tragedy uh, in in travel. You know, they remarket themselves, they rebrand themselves, and they have lots of great deals out there. So Carnival, Norwegian, lots of cruise lines right now have great deals on cruises. Uh, All-inclusive vacations, uh, island vacations in the Caribbean and Mexico, those are always big because, again, you can drop one price. It's all included. Uh, your, all your, your, your water sports on the, on the beach and all your meals and all that stuff is all included. So that's, uh, th those are very, very popular. Those will always be popular. We are now the official travel agency of the St. Louis Rams. And in fact, uh, we are sending the Rams cheerleaders down to Mexico for their photo shoot next week. Can uh, I go? Yeah. Uh, I actually had a seat and she turned it down. And you didn't, and you didn't tell me it about it. I had one seat left, she turned it down. So I had to give it away. I didn't, Thank sorry. you very much, April. Where is the love? <laughs> There's no longer any love between you and I. You know. August is now Hate April Trupiano Month. <laughs> I'm going to sign, file, file a petition and I'm do it as soon as I possibly can. No, I'm just but no, okay, no, but wow. Congratulations yeah. on yes, that. Uh, yes, yeah. that, that announcement will be here uh, probably today in the papers, and uh, we're very, very happy about Congratulations. that. Congratulations. Very happy. Well, John, we want to thank you for coming on and thank give you. us uh, so all these great tips and uh, now letting folks know that don't go online, find a travel agent. <laughs> so uh, it's the best way to go. Thank you very much again. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, we got to take a, a, another break here on uh, St. Louis Presents, and when we come back, we will be joined by Teresa Harris. So stay with us. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. Packers. Vikings. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. When tragedy struck Indonesia and Haiti, the world responded. The famine, war, and drought affecting the Horn of Africa right now is larger than both these crises combined, and the world should be paying attention. Text a donation of $10, but do more than donate. Forward the facts to everyone you know. Forward from our site, forward on Facebook, and forward on Twitter. We are the relief. Is this what you had in mind? Every choice we make has a consequence. Help EarthShare and its members restore balance to the world. Visit EarthShare.org and see what you can do. EarthShare. One environment. One simple way to care for it. Welcome back for more of St. Louis Presents. That was that was some good information about travel. I think things that people didn't really know. Yeah, still mad at her for not telling me about that trip to Mexico. <laughs> but it's all good. All right, well, we have some more good summer information heading us into fall. From, uh, we have Teresa Harris, teacher with the Riverview School District. Teresa, thanks for being here. Back to school is right around the, around the corner. Is it the most wonderful time uh, of the year for you? No. no. <laughs> 
<laughs> Not really? Unfortunately. Not no, really. I look forward to it. You get you get restless at home, you know, you go, you get a little cabin fever, you're ready to get back to the kids. But this is the time where you get ready a couple of weeks from now, maybe you start preparing your classroom and putting yeah, all the things together. Yeah, that's right. the joy of it. You, you get a little excited and, you know, you get ready for that, that new batch of kids and you don't know what to expect. You're so. like, I hope I don't get no bad kids this year, please <laughs> God. No such thing as bad kids. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> as, as you know, as a teacher, tell us about you know what, what kind of tips do you give parents as far as getting kids ready for school to start? Ooh, just get the kids ready, please. <laughs> How so? How do they? I mean, what, what do they Don't do? Don't just push them out the door. Don't just put them on the bus. Get the kids ready. Um, one of the things I like to tell my parents is just be encouraging of the kids. Get the kids excited about school. A lot of of the kids see school as a punishment almost like they're just going I to have a to like oh I just don't want to go here be encouraging to the kids get excited do some some, the, some fun back to school things with your children to make them excited about going back to school maybe buy some some new outfits some new shoes book bag things like that just get them excited be encouraging is, is it hard for them to make the transition from summer to, to fall? Oh, I yes. Mean, you know, like with the sleep pattern. It's hard for teachers. And activity pattern and all that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Um, I would say two weeks before school starts, get them back on that sleeping pattern. Go two to bed. weeks before yes. school begins, get yes. them back on their, their, their sleep Because you have pattern. to think of it. Some of these schools start, they have to be up at like 7.30 on that bus stop. And that's hard. Think mm. about a seven-year-old, 7.30 in the morning. See, my mom Ooh. didn't do that. My mom didn't do that to me. It was like I got to sleep as in and, and, and as late as I wanted to in the summer. And then when was that day before school? It was time to, that, was, that was when bedtime started. But you highly recommend two weeks. Yeah. You know, back in the, you know. Because your first day of school, you don't want to be. But you're so excited as a little kid. You know, you're like. You're on that sometimes adrenaline some rush, kids, you think? I think for most kids, at least even myself, the first day of school, I thought was the most fun day. Because you I get, get to see the kids who you haven't maybe seen yeah, all summer. Yeah. And, you know, some of these kids who go to school, may, maybe even spent the whole night before picking out their first day of school outfit. If they don't have a uniform or whatever, like, <laughs> I'm going to wear this. I'm going to put on these shoes. I'm going to be killing them, you know. <laughs> I think school has changed so much mm -hmm. and it's so serious nowadays that teachers are just jumping right in on that first day mm -hmm. where when I was growing up the first day was all about getting to know one another and we don't do that anymore. It's just all right first day open that book up and you get a lot of kids that are not prepared for that and they're, they're coming in sleepy, they're tired, they were up all night talking you know to everybody on the phone these days five-year-olds on the phone like I'm gonna see you at school tomorrow what are you gonna wear I don't know what you gonna wear yeah. so I would recommend nine o'clock get in the bed mm -hmm. early in the morning get a nice full breakfast have a little pep talk okay this is what I expect from you this year let's go meet the teacher please go meet the teacher that's probably my biggest tip mm -hmm. get to know your teacher this teacher is about to have a relationship with your child so it's a must to have a relationship with this teacher you have to communicate that relationship has to be there what about basic school supplies what kids what should they come Ooh. to school with now they have a list I saw some stores are posting a list in the store yes. for each grade thank you to those stores who yes. are doing that please purchase everything on the school supply list the teachers really do sit down at the table together and put everything on that school supply list. We don't just put it on there to put it on there. And I'm a parent, I know some of us, we see that school supply list and we think, what? Markers? What, <laughs> what do they need markers for? No, now they need <laughs> tissue and Scott yes. towels and... Reams of paper, no. I mean, all outrageous type of things. However, if you do not supply these things for your child, the teacher is supplying it for your child, which kind of makes it unfair. If you think about it, a teacher has 25 students, mm. six of the students are not prepared. She has to go out and buy six notebooks, six packs of crayons. You know, that's unfair, especially if that teacher has children of her own or his own. Mm -hmm. So please prepare, take the school supply list seriously. If you see some things on there that you're questioning, talk to the teacher. They're willing to talk about the school supply list. If you can buy eight out of the ten items, that's fine. Just talk to the teacher and say, okay, what, what does he need? He or she need right now? What can I get later? Just communicate. It's all about the communication. And, then it, and I think, in fairness, to you guys, it's not like you guys think that there's a whole bunch of uh, 
outrageous or exorbitant amount of supplies that kids, exactly. you know, it's telling family to go out and buy an iPad or no, a laptop. Exactly. They're like, hey, look, pencils, right. pens, markers, loose leaf paper, lunchbox, exactly. that kind of stuff. Just right? the essentials. And we're asking you to buy it this one time. It's going to last the, the whole, whole year. year. And then take advantage of, like, this weekend is tax-free weekend. That's so right. take advantage of this. Get to the stores early because you know they're going to be super packed. So, and, you know, just take advantage of it. I know one of the big issues teachers have to go through, and especially the student themselves, are, you know, those kids who have to deal with bullying. Oh, is, yeah. is there anything that that's you have to... Yeah, on our list that's right one now. of my tips. How, yes. do you, how do you go about that, and what do you recommend to parents about the kids who are the victims of being bullied? My tips to the parents is familiarize yourself with the school's procedures and policies. Read the handbook. A lot of parents, they get it. It's sitting on a shelf somewhere. They haven't even looked at it. You want to know what the school deems acceptable and not acceptable. You want to know if that phone conversation your child had last night and brings up in school, if they can be punished for that. Because, you know, there's so much drama with little people these days. And you look at them and you're like, why are you all that distressed out? You're too, you too small to be distressed out. So bullying is definitely a problem. There are school counselors for this. If as soon, my tips to the parents is as soon as you suspect something or you see something, bring it up. Yes, don't bring, wait. Do not wait mm -hmm. because I get that all the time with parents. Well, this has been going on and I'm like, right. I haven't heard anything about it. Bring it up to the teacher, bring it up to the school counselor. That's what they're there for. We can do small groups with, you know, the group who's causing the problems because the last thing we want is for a child to come to school and not feel safe. Yes. Or to feel like they, they can't be there because somebody is picking on them. And, you know, we've talked on the show before about all the changes going on in technology. And that technology is hitting, you know, people as young as, like you were saying, five mm -hmm. years old. I mean, every child knows how to text, use phone. social media, tweet, Facebook, all of that. Mm -hmm. and, and what's the impact that's having on the socialization of these kids? It's having a really, really big impact. I think... I teach fifth grade, so they're at that age. They're on Twitter, <laughs> they're on Facebook. Yeah. They're, you know, they're, they're, doing they're all being that stuff. very friendly. So everybody has a cell phone. Mm -hmm. um, we use technology in the classroom. I have my notes today on my cell phone. Right. Um, we try to keep it positive, and we try to reinforce that. Be respectful. Be kind. Don't say anything or tweet or text or post anything that you don't want your parents to look at or that you wouldn't say in front of your parents. Right. So if you can't do that, then just don't do it at all. And you know, as parents, I think that we've got to mention that it really is our first, we're the fr front line of responsibility oh, there. Yes. You know, I know that um, my honey, with his children, he has, it, he requires, if you want a Facebook page, I will have your login and your password. Oh, yes. And he will monitor that. And he's also uh, obviously one of their friends, so he sees what's going on. It's so important oh, yeah. because otherwise you just can't possibly know. It happens in a nanosecond. Yeah, if something happens right. and the children are that young, the parents are held responsible. Right. Yeah. So you have to make it your responsibility yeah. to know what your child yeah. is doing at all times, in school or out of school. Right. You have to make it a responsibility. Yeah. My biggest tip to parents is... Be responsible and be active in your child's life. Know what's going thank on. You. Well, thank you for joining us. You gave us a lot of good tips and yes. gave folks uh, a lot of good information about what they need to do to prepare their kids before school starts mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks. All right, we got to take another break here on St. Louis Presents, but when we return, we're going to head into the kitchen with my man Jeff Merriweather, who's cooking up some fine, delicious burgers over there. Can't wait to try one, His Jeff. His favorite sandwich. <laughs> times of peace and times of war in times of joy and times of pain we need them they need us and we need you the USO until everyone comes home
there's a lot to try in the kitchen. Keep innocent things from triggering an asthma attack. Learn how to stop their asthma attacks at noattacks.org. Monsters can be anywhere. this hard graduating can be even harder but you can help jose and the students in your community make it through by visiting boostup.org Kitchen, Rob's favorite place to be. Yep. I'm the <laughs> official taste tester of St. Louis Presents. <laughs> and we're here with Chef Jeff Merriweather of Strong Men Charitable Organization. Thank That's you for right. being here again. Thank you. And he's, many talents. yes, <laughs> cooking up his favorite sandwich, which is mm -hmm. the burger. That is cool. So um, how, did, how did this invention come about? Because you said this is your original invention. Uh, well, it, 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 we've always, my father, my mother, we were a burger family. Yeah. Every Saturday night, honestly, that was the, on the menu. And we were kind of structured like that, so we kind of mm -hmm. knew what to expect every day of the week. Saturday night was burger night. So, uh, and my mom made fantastic burgers. Even when we went to the drive-in yeah. Saturday night, put the burgers in the bag. So, I grew up on burgers, loved them. And uh, so as I became an adult and started to kind of flex my culinary skills. <laughs> I just kind of started taking what uh, I learned from, the, uh, from as a kid and uh, just kind of added to it as I came along, did a lot of different burgers. And uh, yeah. so yeah, so this is one of my favorites. This is the, uh, this is the Pepper Jack Wrench Burger. Pepper Jack Pepper Can you Jack give us Wrench. the secret to it? I mean, what's the secret to a good burger? What, did well, your mom ever tell you the secret? Because my mom makes great burgers. But she tells me there is no secret, but my burgers never taste like her burgers. So. Actually, there is a good secret, and this is it right here, the toasted bun. Ah. That's the secret. It actually gives your burger a whole nother dimension as far as the flavor. Uh, bread is it, it, pretty much one of the more important uh, parts of the sandwich. So when you get a good bun and then you toast it, you got nice little crispy edges, it just kind of makes the burger flow a lot more. So we talked about the meat and everything that goes in on the burger, but obviously just as important as what goes into the seasoning on the burger is what goes on the bun and all the other toppings, the condiments and the, and the vegetables. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, the key is a, a, a good toasted bun. And uh, I toast it on top of the stove in a skillet uh, with a little virgin olive oil. Uh, and you want to kind of get the ends nice and crispy. And then as soon as you pull that bun out, just to kind of keep it nice and fresh and moist, you want to go ahead and start putting your condiments on it. So I usually get a little Miracle Whip uh, and a little um, ranch dressing to put on it. And then you can kind of let them sit and they stay fresh. If you don't put the condiments on it, they tend to kind of get a little stale while waiting for the, uh, for oh, the meat to cook. That's a good tip. I never so, thought of that. Right, I exactly. Never thought of that. So uh, yeah, it, it, it works pretty good. It, it does. Now, what are the special spices that you recommend putting on the burger? Oh, definitely. Now, and I know uh, you can make all kinds of combinations. But. Exactly, exactly. And uh, whatever is to your liking. But what I really like is, uh, of course, salt and pepper. Uh, and I like my food a little spicy. Uh, my father went to school in New Orleans and came back with a, a Cajun <laughs> swing to his cooking. So uh, we do we use cayenne pepper, uh, again regular pepper, chili powder, uh, garlic powder, mm. and um, uh, it, that's pretty much it. Sometimes I use a little seasoning salt. I didn't bring that with me today, but uh, but after the uh, salt and pepper, I tend to like to spice it up. Uh, so yeah, and then um, 
So that's it. And then we have uh, different mustards that I ch like to use. Spicy chipotle is one of my favorites. Mm. Uh, we also have um, the uh, sweet and hot stone ground mustard and uh, and honey champagne. Honey champagne. Honey champagne. Exactly. Hey, there so, you go. So I actually like to kind of put the mustard, it's little cheap. dabs of mustard on the side, so while you're eating, you can kind of dip it in the there mustard. There you go. You so, can dip. Definitely. So no, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get a chance to try some of these burgers oh, uh, a, a little bit later on the show. I'm looking forward to that. Exciting yes. as you continue to. Uh, serve up a little sum in that pan. Yes, so uh, we're going to take another break here, uh, right here on St. Louis Presents. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, voter registration, what you need to know as we prepare for voting here in the state of Missouri. Some very important information for you come, coming up next right here after the break. my uncle, what's a special interest? He says they run Washington. He said their groups are special interest in getting bills through Congress or the State House. So I said, I'm a Boy Scout, and our supporters help make a difference by educating elected officials on issues. Does that make me a special interest too? I guess my uncle thinks the Boy Scouts are helping to run Washington. Am I missing something? Learn more about American democracy by logging on to representativedemocracy.org. Packers, Viking, Packers, Viking, Packers, Viking. Red state, blue state, vegan, carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown, downtown, optimus. Center. We come to different conclusions. Half empty, half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, <laughs> our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. So give, advocate, volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. This financial advisor is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I've done nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. In case you haven't heard, this is an election year, and uh, of course we have the presidential election coming up in November. But what you may or may not know is we got some primary elections coming up here in the state of Missouri that is just right around the corner. And here to talk about that is Mary Wheeler Jones and Gary Stoff of the Board of Elections here in St. Louis. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, first off, just biggest misconceptions people have about voting in the primary elections. Uh, Mary, I, let's start with you, Mary. Uh, I think people don't understand in primaries you have to choose a ballot, a party ballot or a nonpartisan ballot. So that is something we try to educate people on. You have to say if you are a Democrat or Republican. <laughs> or if you don't want to say that, you have to say, well, give me a nonpartisan ballot. Oh. And there's a difference if you decide to go that route. If you decide yeah. to choose a nonpartisan ballot, you can't vote on You the, can't vote, the, vote on the candidates. You can only vote on the issue. And in this, in this election, it's a constitutional amendment that's on the ballot. So if you don't want to choose a party ballot, you can't vote for your favorite candidate <laughs> or your least favorite candidate. <laughs> now, Gary, what do you guys do to get people to go out and vote for these primary elections? Because a lot of people don't think about voting in August. They think about what's coming up in November. That's true, and it's a little bit sad because the primary sets the stage for November. We do publicize the elections in the newspaper. We also send a voter notification card to every registered voter prior to every election and that's extremely important not just to tell them there's an election coming up but that also tells them their ward their precinct and most importantly their polling place where they have to go to vote because to vote you have to be registered you have to have some form of id which does not have to be photo 
and you have to be in the right polling place. Yes. Now, yeah. and this year, speaking of that, there's there's something new that that people are getting in the mail. Well, it's not new. It's not oh, new. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we send these out every. We send a notification card out every prior to every yes. election. They're always a little creative looking like this, right. but we do send them. But what's on this one this time, and it is every two years, is your actual permanent ID card. And on your permanent ID card, it gives you all your information that you can carry around in your pocket and keep with you forever as long as you're still a registered voter in the city. So that is the additional uh, piece of information on your card this time. And then it's all the calendar dates of upcoming elections. And most importantly, the word Gary and I and the board wants to get out is that pay attention to what's on this card, the information, because of redistricting, your polling place and your precinct may have changed. I had a question about that for you, uh, uh, Gary. As far as redistricting, why do, why, why do we do the redistricting? Is it to benefit the candidates, or is it because it makes it easier on the voter? Well, it probably depends on your perspective, but every 10 years we do a census. That's mandated by federal law. And as a result of the changes in population, then all of the legislative districts have to be realigned to provide as much balance as possible, both in terms of numbers of registered voters and trying to preserve historical voting patterns. And so what you have in Missouri, as other states, congressional districts change, state rep districts change, state senate districts change, mm -hmm. our ward boundaries change, and after all that takes place, then we have to redo the precinct line so that when a voter goes in a polling place, they only vote for one state rep, for example. And so this card is extremely important because it reminds folks, even if you've been going to the same place for a long time, check your card because that voting place may have changed. And we don't want to stand in line for however long it takes and then get up there and find out that in the wrong yeah. place. we're in the wrong place. But if they happen to do go in the wrong place, the, the people there can provide them the correct information. We do have a yes. mechanism for doing that. And that's, exactly. it's really important, I think, for the voter to take the time not only to know where they're supposed to vote, but, but to look at the candidates because yeah. they can facilitate their own voting process if they have some idea for whom they want to vote on Tuesday. When would be, Mary, the, the, the absolute last day that somebody can go out and register to vote? You can uh, register to vote all the time, anytime. But if you want to vote in this particular election on August the 7th, you should have been registered by July the 11th. So if you're registered today or tomorrow, you'll be able to vote in the November election, but you won't be able to vote in the, uh, unless you move from one address to another address within the city of St. Louis, then you still can vote in this election. But if you've moved from the county to the city or vice versa, you won't be able to vote in the August election. But you will be considered registered on that date and for future elections. Now, you all have some really good tips and some ideas, some things that people need to know before they get to election day. What are some of those things that, that you know that people need to be reminded of or things that people don't even realize? Well, again, we want to remind them to pay attention to their card, right. read that information, know where their polling place and their precinct is, know their uh, state reps uh, so they know what, when they ask for their ballot, they'll know who's on there. Uh, to know what identification they can bring. Again, we're not a, a picture ID state, but there are a lot of creative uh, or flexible uh, identifications that you can bring, such as your utility bill, uh, your, um, your, help me out here. Well, a driver's uh, license. Would a library card <laughs> work? No. No, no, no but actually, this particular card is a form of ID, That's a form as of ID well too. as the Social permit. Security number? Yes, Social yes. Security card, yeah. uh, a current um, uh, utility bill or bank statement, or if you're a college student in Missouri, your student ID card would also work. The student okay. ID card would work? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, something that you said, Mary, was that um, something that I think most people don't realize is that if you have been convicted of a, of a felony, mm -hmm. you can actually vote you can. once your conditions have expired. Exactly. If you're no longer on uh, the, t the, the term in the streets, on papers, mm. but... Yeah. <laughs> But basically, if you're no longer under supervision, probation, or parole, then you can yeah. vote again, unless you committed a, a crime that's related to elections, and that's okay. a different story. Exactly. But convicted felons who are no longer on supervision can have their uh, voting rights reinstated and bring us verification. It's a letter they get showing their release mm -hmm. from supervision, and then we can, they can vote on election day. You know, because voting is one of the most important rights we have as Americans. You know, I, I who have traveled in other countries and you know, I know Rob knows, has 
familiar with people from other countries, and it really is a big deal here. I mean, that's a big right that we want to preserve it is. at all costs. And we're familiar with that, too, because we've worked with other uh, uh, people from other countries who have come here just to talk to us about our voting, and, and we're just telling people that. We've talked to people who are not allowed to vote, who are restricted, mm -hmm. and you, the one right you definitely have is the right to vote, and your vote does count. It counts. It does count. It really does. Yeah. 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 Particularly mm -hmm. on the local level, and when you think about it, Egypt, for example, for the first time in their history, they recently had elections. People are dying, fighting every day for the right to vote. Yes. And in our country, you have that right. You have the right to register, you have the right to vote, and it's a cherished right which everyone really should exercise. So again, the primary election is on August the 7th, yes. and you encourage people to go out and check your card and where to go vote. and you know. In the, the times are pretty much from 6, 6 o'clock in the morning to, up 7 to 7 p.m. 6, 6, 6 a.m. to, to 7, 7 p.m. Okay, so exactly. make sure you check your ID card and check where you're supposed to go vote because that is very, very important. We want to thank you both for joining us on the show today. Well, thank you for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. You. A, lot, a lot of good information. Uh, we're going to take another break here on St. Louis Presents. When we come back, we're going to wrap things up with some food from Jeff Merriweather. We may get to enjoy retirement, but our old cell phones shouldn't. Recycle them. It's easy, it's free, and it's good for the environment. Hi, this is Richard Garn. Please answer the call to recycle. There's a monster in my bed. Even innocent things can trigger an asthma attack. Learn more at noattacks.org. Please make the monsters go away. Yo, what up? It's your man Nelly, and you watch your STL TV. Experience the loop all day. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to St. Louis Presents, and uh, I gotta tell you, my co-host Rob here is drooling that, over the burger. That looked like that something, seriously, good. that looked like something you see on TV. That's like, beautiful. That, that yeah. was like a work of art right yeah. there. Well, can't we're gonna wait. get a chance to taste can't, it in a minute. Can't wait to try that, yeah. It was a good show, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if you wanna uh, catch <laughs> us, uh, by all means, we encourage you to do that. If you're not watching us on uh, your local cable, you can follow us on Twitter, mm -hmm. or you can follow us on Facebook, and you can look us up on YouTube. I know our stuff is on there. Uh, I believe, uh, look at it, facebook.com slash STLTV channel, or twitter.com STLTV channel. So make sure you do that and follow us, and uh, we'll get you, you know, informed on everything that you need to know here in St. Louis mm -hmm. and So, you beyond. know, we need to, uh, we just want to remind you that uh, some of the wrap up from today, don't book your travel online. Find a travel agent. Right, right. Yeah. And by the way, we want to put up, uh, 
Let, Mr. Yeah, let you guys know if you guys want to reach Travelplex. I have yeah. worked with them. They are fabulous. Um, Travelplex.com. You can find them. It tells you exactly how to contact them, how to go in and make an appointment, how to get your own travel agent, and have you know just be set up. It's great. I love that convenience. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, it's yeah. all a lot trusted of, again, advisor. Really, again, like it's part we said, of my some people. Team. I've been one of those people who've always gone my own route and. Yeah. Just did everything online, and yeah. but you know it is yeah. good to have that personal feel right. where somebody's working for you, like you know yeah. just doing things for you where you feel like you're being catered to. Yes. Make sure your trip goes smoothly and without problems, and if there are any problems, you have somebody to contact. Yeah. So. And then we got some really great information on how to prepare the kids for school. Yeah. You know, how to make that transition from summer to, to fall. Because I think that was, I think that's really important, getting, getting your kids prepared and getting them, you know, getting them ready. And then uh, getting all their school supplies. So there's that. And then we also. Oh, you know what I want to ask you? I, I didn't get a chance. You know when you were a kid, the, whole, the whole lunch boxes? Yeah. Did you ever have like a really favorite, a favorite lunch box? You know what? I loved my lunch boxes, but they were usually just like really cool, colorful ones. You didn't I don't have think like I ever a had a little character. orphan Annie lunchbox no, or something. No. I had like a super French lunchbox. <laughs> that was that was awesome. You yeah. Know, my incredible. And then Hulk. don't forget to vote. That's important. You guys don't forget don't to vote. vote. Only about twenty five percent of the people actually go out in the primary and elections. Vote. Yeah. In the primary so elections is way important. more. So definitely if you have registered, yeah. if you are registered, definitely go out on August seventh yeah. and vote and definitely check your definitely. card because that's that very important. All right, well, the burger time is finally it's burger arrived. Time. It's burger and, time. And uh, Jeff is uh, coming over to uh, bring us some of this delicious homemade burger mackerel. that he calls the Pepper Jack Burger. And look at how pretty Ooh, it is, Jeff. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Jeff, that is, that is, beautiful. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Yes, I just want to cry when I see it. <laughs> and it tears of I joy. Know. <laughs> it is tears of joy, my friend. <laughs> Pepper it Jack smells burger. so good. Yeah. I'm afraid. I don't know how you're going to get that in your... <laughs> <laughs> it's like just going to yeah. be a big old bite. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. It's, it's a big burger. I can't yeah, wait to try it, though. That's why I served it with knives. I know. Wanna, I know. So, oh, so gonna, you can uh, eat try. it with a... Yeah, you can cut it in half. Exactly. Here. I'm, I'm going to just metal. taste it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cut, cut this in half because mm. this, is, this looks oh beautiful. This looks amazing. Mm. And you got to dip it. Now, tell us just a little bit about how... People can find your organization, Strong Men Charitable Organization. How can they find out more? Okay, we, we're just getting started, uh, so please give me a call at 314-368-1375. Uh, or you can reach me on my personal uh, email address at theweatherman90515 at att.net. Excellent, excellent. This looks well, amazing. This is this may start to be one of my favorite sandwiches in honor of. Uh, well, thank you, uh, National Sandwich Month, yes. because if not <laughs> for you, we would not have Jeff here and learning the tricks of his trade <laughs> to all the secrets to making his burger juicy and delicious and his buns yes. toasty and his condiments all perfect. Perfect and, and everything. Human. This looks great. So uh, we're gonna sit down and chow this down. I usually like to eat and stuff my face, so I don't want to do that and embarrass myself because it's going to be juice coming <laughs> know, all right? down my cheek and all that stuff, and we just can't we, we just can't we just can't have all of that because I like the juice to go down my wrist too right, and just right. you know <laughs> eat, eat it like that. Stop and it I'm up. just messing with the knife and was stab myself. <laughs> all right, but anyway, that's going to do it for this edition yes. of St. Louis Presents. We want to thank you so much for watching, and please join us next week. Where we're back with more new guests and new information. We got to go. Good night. Bye.